Hey, Meredith, welcome to 11 Questions. Hi, thanks for having me. I'll just start directly by asking you, where are you from and where do you live? I'm from Washington, D.C., and I live in Washington, D.C. I've lived in a bunch of other cities, but I am back where I'm from. What's the most interesting place that you have lived? I lived in Buenos Aires, Argentina for a year uh, from 2009 to 2010. Uh, after I graduated from university and I was working in advertising there. Would you say you're a morning person or a night owl? Neither. I'm a strong afternoon person. (laughs) Uh, But definitely if I had to pick, it would be night owl because I'm certainly not a morning person is what I can tell you. Never have been in my entire life. Ever, ever, ever. (laughs) So yeah. (laughs) What's the best way for you to start your day? Well, there's the best way. And then there's the way I usually start my day. You know, the best way would be to like get up and walk my dog and not look at my phone. The way I usually start my day is, you know, the way we all do looking at our phone, (laughs) but I really like to walk a lot. So for me, ideally it would, you know, be walking in the morning. My dog actually doesn't like to walk. She's (laughs) little and older and lazy, but um, I do. So I would say, that and not having to sort of rush into anything. If you were to brag about only one thing in your life, what would that be? I'm really proud of my writing. Obviously, that includes my book, Brag Better. But I would say I would brag about my ability to write um, and to, that's something that um, I've always done. And uh, yeah, so I would say I, I'm going to brag about my ability to pick the best words and to put them in the best order. That's a good brag. I like it. (laughs) I pick the best words and I pick the best order. If you were to pick a movie title to describe your life, what would that be? Well, I had this, I don't know if it was a movie title. I don't know if I have a movie title, but I always said that like if I wrote a book of essays, it would be called All My Exes Married Lovely Doormats. Uh, (laughs) An aggressive woman, Um, but I don't know. That's as far as I've gotten. I like the title. Maybe we should make a movie about it. Okay. What are you absolutely determined to do in your life? I would say having something I've written adapted for TV or film, seeing it in another medium. That would be pretty cool. In your life so far, what's one thing that you had to unlearn? There are a lot of things I've had to unlearn. I would say one thing that I continue to have to unlearn is not being nice to myself. While I am someone who's very ambitious and aggressive, I can't be so hard on myself and I'm, I haven't unlearned it. I mean, I've learned, unlearned parts of it. Um, but I think sort of, we all work on that. Yeah. I think that's something we can all continue to unlearn. Yeah. And I can be really, really mean to myself and I'm not interested in it, but sometimes it's an easy place to go if you're used to it. Yeah. I can, I can relate. What's the most heartwarming thing that you have seen so far? It's been really heartwarming to see the people connect with my book and my work. It's been heartwarming to see how my friends want to be there for me um, and how I try to be there for people in a time when you can't see them, which really sucks. It's always heartwarming to see my dog, who I love very much. <laughs> but I guess this is video, so I'll come bring her over. B, like, why are you bothering? This is Bean. Hi, that's a cutie. <laughs> she's not interested in this video <laughs> hi so that's that's what I would see I've, there's been a lot I mean COVID has been a lot of horrific things and it has also been a lot of kindness and a long long way to go and people having creative ways to connect with others that don't require being in person um, I've been I've been impressed by that you are an author and I'm sure you must also read a lot of books If I were to ask to pick only three books you can read forever, which ones would that be? Probably Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, Metropolitan Life by Fran Lebowitz. The third is, I don't know, you're younger than I am, obviously, but The Mixed Up Files of Mrs. Baisley, Frank Weiler, was really up there, which was a kid's book. I haven't read it in a million years about a sister and brother who run away from home and go live in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Um, oh, interesting. I highly suggested it. it was it's a very very famous book um, and something I love a lot so I don't know that totally came out of nowhere I haven't thought about that <laughs> but 
Uh, yeah. Well, that's a sign you need to find it and read it again. Yes. If you were to pick one interesting life experience to share with us, what would you tell us today? I would say I'm a pretty jealous person, which is also something I have to unlearn. And it's really to be easy to be jealous of other people. Um, but then it's sort of what you do with that. So, so I tell a story in the book, which I tell all the time. I saw a write-up of some women doing interesting things in DC. And there was one in particular, and I was very jealous of what she was doing. And I was like, well, I'm going to do it better was my first thought. But then my second thought was, you know, I should reach out to her and get a piece of that pie. It wasn't necessarily the most altruistic reason to reach out to her, but I decided I could accomplish more by having her close to me. I don't think it, it, I went in with the best of intentions necessarily, but I said something like, oh, I really admire what you're doing. You know, I'd love to grab coffee. That was almost 10 years ago. And Jess, who I did that with is one of my closest friends and also someone that I think is a genius at public relations and things that she does, just the work that she does. She's the best at her job, truly. And it has led to us doing wonderful things together and being there for each other. Um, and that's just the policy in general of this idea of, you know, I, I talk about shine theory in the book, which is from uh, Amina Tussauds and Ann Friedman, this idea that, you know, more is accomplished together. And when you are inclined to feel jealous, um, a great way to undo that is to reach out to that person and just let them know you're, you're admiring them or maybe, you know, you can help them and they can help you. I would say that's, that's super powerful. And when I do get that jealous or feel those feelings, I think about whether or not I want that exact same specific thing. Like that thing exactly. When you're releasing a book, it's really easy to be jealous of books that do better or get on New York Times or whatever and brag that it has done really well. But, you know, it's still hard not to compare yourself. Um, but then when I look at, let's say, an you know, a book got on the New York Times bestseller list, it's like, well, that's great. But do I want to have written that exact book? It's like, no, that's not what I want to be writing about. That's not my subject matter expertise. I actually don't want that exact thing. I would say that's, that's something that I always try to impart to people. That's great. And I also read Aminatu and Anne's book, Big Friendship. So I love the shine theory. Thank you so much, Meredith, for answering all my questions today. Thank you for having me.